Warning, the following program is solely intended for a mature audience. Any of the idiotic opinions and views expressed on this show are solely opinions of Dark Cringe Radio and not of its advertisers, which is completely pointless because this poorly produced dumbass podcast has no advertisers. <laughs> I'm sorry, son, um, but uh, we do have an advertiser now, Amp Smart. So, uh, yeah, um, sorry, go back to your thing. Furthermore, any rebroadcast or redistribution of Dark Friend Radio podcast without per- the permission is strictly prohibited. If you do, we will find you. And then we will send three black-eyed children to your home or office to collect your soul. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Coming to you live from the Mistopheles Studios in Dark Fringe Radio. And welcome to Dark Fringe Radio. I am your host, Will Martinez, and we have a great episode for you guys tonight. We're going to dig deep, 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 deep into the dark side of Big Pharma. And of course, my partner in crime who's going to do this with me tonight, my buddy, my co-host, Jay Galosi. Jay, what's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Ah, uh, you know what I always say. It's another day in paradise, my friend. How are you doing tonight? Oh. Fucking phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> fucking phenomenal. <laughs> That's fucking phenomenal that you're fucking phenomenal. That's right, man. Hey, listen, we got another great episode for everybody to listen to tonight, man, and I'm really pumped up for this one. Um, I'm on location, so I sound a little weird and sound a little poppy tonight, but it's this fucking microphone. And I'm in California, so it's all fucked up. But it's all good at the same time. So, uh, anyways, we get this bitch going. And I wanted to remind everybody of the social media. Um, you know, you can uh, just follow all of us, all our shit, all everything that we post. I mean, we post a lot of stuff on a daily basis. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just look up Dark Fringe Radio. That's all you got to do. And just follow our stuff, and you'll be, trust me, entertained. So if not, just drop me a line and tell me to fuck off, and uh, that'd be great. So, um, yeah, you can follow us all there. And how to listen to the podcast, Jay, please, tell everybody where they can find us, please, because I'm already tired of telling everybody you how to find us. <laughs> you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, which is a big one, SoundCloud, Google Play. However you download and listen to your particular podcast and content, that is where you can find the Dark Fringe Radio. That's right, Jay. And so um, basically everywhere where you basically can find a podcast, uh, you can find us. Just look up Dark Fringe Radio. Uh, If you subscribe, you leave a comment, please do that. And if you do that, we will shout you out on the next following week's episode of the podcast. So uh, make sure to do that and uh, we will do so. And so that's it. That's enough of the self-promotion for tonight. Now let's uh, get on to the uh, next part of our podcast, Jay. And what are we doing? Are we doing... Will you tell me already? Or are we doing the mailbag? Uh, what are we doing? What well, we do- usually usually we start off with the mailbag, and then we go to the will you tell me. But we could switch up a little bit this week. Let's get Fuck crazy. It. Let's get crazy. 2019, tonight. motherfucker. Let's switch it up. Fuck it. Let's go. Will you tell me? Go ahead, Jay. Let's see what you got this week. Let's go. Will you tell me? So, Will, we've recently gotten past Mother's Day. We are two very smart individuals. I'm sure, Will, you can tell me all about the wandering womb. The wandering womb, huh? Jay, I am going to tell you right now, I can't even come up with a fucking story that would even justify Ah, it. (laughs) Lame. Lame. It is lame, but I can't even come up with the story with the wandering womb. What is that, Jay? I mean, that sounds like a horror story. Wandering womb. Please, tell me. So the wandering womb womb, uh, was a diagnosis by ancient Greek doctors uh, that believed the woman's womb was a separate creature with a mind of its own. And according to the writings of Plato, Socrates, and uh, Hippocrates, when a woman celebrated for an extended time her uterus described as a, quote, living animal, end quote, eager to bear children, could dislodge and glide freely about the woman's body, causing suffocation, seizures, hysteria. This curious diagnosis uh, endured in some form 
all the way up until the Romans and the Byzantines, well after doctors had learned that the womb was actually held in place by a ligament. So that's what. So, so that's what the, the, the I don't, wandering. Isn't that sound like crazy? Isn't that crazy shit? Yeah, the wandering womb. That sounds like a fucking straight up horror story. Quite honest with you, the wandering womb. I mean, I mean, just is crazy. I've never heard of that. I mean, you really stopped me on this could, one because I couldn't. Could even, you, I couldn't even come up with a bullshit imagine? story for this one. No, what? Yeah, I was curious to see what kind of bullshit you could spin around this because I figured you'd come up with some kind of like, oh, the wandering womb <laughs> is a creature that lives in the forest. Uh, no, way back for the Cherokee Indian, uh, they talk about the wandering womb that would eat a woman's children. Like, that's where I thought you were going to go, but no. Dude, I, go, womp, womp. I couldn't even go there this week, but it was just so hard. I was just like, what? Wandering womb? What? I just, it, it was, it hit, me all, it hit me all too much at the same time, my friend. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't come up with the bullshit story that quick, but that's fucking fascinating. I never even heard of anything like that in my life because, I mean, who would even... To me, like I said, w- when you hear that, it sounds like fucking horror story. So uh, again, that's it uh, does. It really, it, it really does sound like some kind of. It's a crazy diagnosis, but it sounds like some kind of creature you would find out <laughs> that's like, like a placenta with teeth. Yeah, a placenta with teeth. Oh, gross. Anyways, well, listen, Jay, you got me this week. Uh, so yeah, that's great. For will you tell me? Thanks for the wandering womb, Jay. Uh, now I'm going to have fucking nightmares about that bullshit. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get into the fucking mailbag this week. And I'm sorry for all the cursing, but that's the kind of mood I'm in this uh, tonight. But uh, we're going to get into yeah. the mailbag. That's right, man. And uh, I'm going to pull that up right here, Jay. And um, I wanted to talk to you about one thing in particular before we get into the mailbag. There was um, a story that came out. I know that you probably saw it in the news um, about uh, the uh, prices of drugs going up. And this is going to be a little bit of a little soft intro to what we're talking about here tonight while I pull this uh, information up. Uh, So kind of just buying time. But I know that you've seen a lot of these things come up in the news as of late and drug prices going up. What is your take on that so far? And that's what we're going to be talking about. Well, I'll get get into great great detail as we get into the, the depth of our podcast. But for me... It's so frustrating. I, I don't, I'm sure you know this, Will, but I actually have a nephew named Josh uh, who has type 1 by diabetes. Yes, I do. Yes. And even with insurance, the amount it costs to get life-saving medicines for him, the price is astronomical. Yes, the markup yes. on it is incredulous. It is unbelievable. It's, it's, it's such a scam. It's basically it's simply criminal at this people point. with power taking advantage of people who need it so if that's not enough of a teaser for you guys to listen to this podcast for tonight that is going to be a lead into what we're going to be talking about but before we get into that jay i have to interrupt but we're going to do the mailbag of course so you ready for that i'm very cautious about emailing yeah man later news we'll get all heavy and serious shit in a minute let's let's go through a fucking mailbag (laughs) all right brother all right so for uh, the mailbag tonight the first one comes from a Derek peterson from tuscaloosa alabama roll tide so uh He writes, Rotide. Hey, guys, Derek from Tuscaloosa. I wanted to know if either of you have seen this new movie that came out recently called The Prodigy. Uh, It's about a kid who ends up being absolutely the most evil child ever and is full of twists and turns. I found it to be a great movie, uh, as most horror as of uh, late kind of sucks. But I figured I would uh, share that with you guys. If you haven't seen it already, uh, please check it out. I highly recommend it. That's from uh, Derek Peterson from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, Jay, have you heard about this movie, The Prodigy? It, you know, I've heard of it, but I haven't actually, I haven't seen it. I saw the first 30 minutes of it, and I thought it was great. I just was interrupted by the flight that I was on, and so it wasn't the right setting to watch the movie. Uh, but from what I right. saw so far, man, it looked pretty fucking good. Um, yeah, this kid is, wow. <laughs> That's all I can say. I haven't seen the rest of the movie. Like I said, I've only seen the first 30 minutes. I can only imagine what the rest of the, you know, the movie looks like, how it ends up. Hopefully it doesn't end up you know, fucked up, but, or a bad ending. I hate movies that end, have a bad ending, but it has the mother, the mother is the uh, girl from orange is the new black. She is the, the, the white girl Piper. I think her name is. And so she's yeah. the mother. Um, and it just, it's, it's a pretty seriously like fucked up movie, but, um, yeah, Derek, thanks for sending that in. I really appreciate it. I saw the first 30 minutes of it from what I saw. I, it looked pretty good. Um, but I definitely have to dedicate more time and a better atmosphere to that movie. So, and then uh, I'm sure Jay will check it out too. No, absolutely. Uh, actually, quick, slight, impromptu movie review. I was 
forced by my daughter to watch this movie today. Forced. Um, and don't tell her. <laughs> it actually wasn't bad. It was really heavy. <laughs> it wasn't a lot of laughs and giggles like I like, but it was an interesting story. It's called Cargo. Cargo? No, I haven't it's heard of it. It's on Netflix, one. and it's about the family of three, this father, this mother, and this baby, this infant, trying to fight their way through a Australian outback that has been taken over by the zombie plague. Oh, Jesus Christ. That sounds like a fucking great movie. I, I do, again, do not go in thinking it's going to be like Zombieland. Not like Zombieland. There's not a single fucking laugh in the entire fucking movie. That being said, it's a different take on the zombies to a point. Uh, you definitely see a little more Aboriginal influence, which is cool. Yeah. Um, you know, you can tell it was, I don't want to say low budget, but it's not, it wasn't a big block, uh, box office kind of movie. So it kind of slid in under the radar. But it is really well written. Uh, it was, it, it kept it moving. You got to see a lot of different aspects of what society had become. Uh, it was a great movie. It was, a, it was, it really made you think, and it's definitely a little bit emotional. So, uh, Cargo on Netflix, you must check it out. Not my what to watch of the week, but little movie review, quick one for you. Awesome, Cargo. Yeah, I want to check that out. I heard about it. I, I really did heard. I heard about it, and I have not had a chance to really look into it or check out what it's even about. You know what I mean? I haven't looked into it at all. So I'm glad that you um, you brought me up to speed on that because um, I was looking into that movie. So. Thanks, Jay, for that um, that suggestion. Um, all right, so the next one for tonight for the mailbag, Jay, comes from Henry Alexander from Brisbane, Australia. Oh, my God, Jay. Australia. Whoa. Yeah. Weird coincidence. Brisbane, yeah. And he says, subject, new listener. So uh, Henry writes, hey, hello, Will and Jay. I'm a new listener to your podcast. I think it's a fantastic uh, podcast, and please keep up the good work. One question I've always wanted to ask a level-headed American such as yourselves. Huh. Well, that's kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> that's stretch Yeah, there, Henry. my nickname at work is Cray Cray JJ, but continue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a stretch, Henry, but I'll give it to you, my friend. Um, what is the fucking obsession? This is what he wrote, I swear. This is, what is the fucking obsession you all have with your guns? Hmm. I mean, it's almost maniacal to see from our point of view how some of you people just are stockpiling arms as if the end of the world is coming and not just pistols or rifles, but semi-automatic AR-15s and shit like that. Please clear up this burn question that I have as I seem not to be able to wrap my head around this. Thank you, Mr. Henry Alexander from Brisbane, Australia. Wow, <laughs> did that fucking take a left turn? Henry, uh, take a left turn. Yeah. Well, Henry, uh, thanks for listening to the podcast. I really uh, appreciate me and Jay really appreciate you uh, listening to the podcast. Please uh, spread it, and uh, please tell a friend or foe about the podcast, and please do that. We appreciate that. But uh, to get to your question, um, <laughs> I don't know what the obsession is, Henry. Um, I do see it as well. I understand what you're talking about. There is a high obsession with our arms and um, willing to bear arms, and it all stems from the Second Amendment, of course, and the right to bear arms, and I understand that, and I agree with it. I, I don't disagree with it, but the problem is, is that the um, – Things change over times. You know, um, you have to remember when this was written, this was written at the time of muskets and things that, you know, took a, a pellet and then you would have to powder it with a thing and pop it in there. And, you know, it was a whole process. It wasn't like you had something that, uh, you know, could uh, mow down a whole tree in a matter of seconds. But um, needless to say, um... <laughs> oh, I'm going to. Here we go. Go I'm ahead, Jay. I'm going to have to step in. Go ahead, Jay. Oh, I'm going to have to step in. Okay. So, to preface, landscape. Grand scheme, just so everyone knows, I don't own guns personally. Uh, I was engaged Me. to a woman who had guns. Uh, she kept them in the house, they in the safe, it the whole thing. I shot guns only a handful of times in my life. We're talking at this point in my life, I've shot guns three times in my life. That being said, the biggest reason why a lot of Americans are stockpiling guns and seeming to act as if the end of the world was coming is simply and majorly because our government and current media status is actually driving a wedge between many factions. So a lot of people kind of, a lot of Americans who are unfortunately super myopic on as if 
the U.S. of A. was the only place to live, um, they're, they feel like they're being attacked 24-7 by news, by uh, different things pulling them one way or the other. And we come from an already natural background that celebrates the revolution that obviously seeded us from the United Kingdom. So we already go in not trusting our government. I don't think America as a whole has trusted its government from day one. So we feel like we need to be there to protect ourselves. Now, yes, it does seem a little extreme to have an AR-15 because really if uh, the National Guard has to come in and remove you from your area, they're going to do so with things like tanks. You're not going to be able to fight over an AR-15. It does seem a bit overkill. That being said, the Second Amendment was put there for us to have the freedom to own the kind of firearms we felt necessary to protect ourselves and our loved ones. At this point, it could be revised, but that's why a lot of Americans are stockpiling guns. I don't agree with it. Like I said, I don't have any. Uh, that being said... Part of the Constitution and the freedom of being an American is the freedom to choose whether you want to house an AR-15 and properly license it, or if you don't. Yeah, listen, that's a great uh, that's a great observation. That's a great opinion, and I respect it. Um, as you, I do not own any guns. I don't see the necessity to own any guns. I do own very big knives, but that's besides the point. Um, but to get into what you're saying, you listen. I I totally get it. I understand. Um, again, uh, I think that there has uh, been a disconnect uh, as of late as to, you know, what we should allow for us to bear arms. I think there, there's a big disconnect, and I think it's because of fear mongering. I totally believe it. I think it's being it's fear mongering from every angle. And I'm not just saying from one angle. I'm saying it's fear mongering from every angle. It's fear mongering from the people who want to uh, exploit this and, and 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 capitalize on this and actually make money off of this. It's also exploited on the other side as well. So I think it's fear mongering on every different angle because we're always fearful of oh we have to protect ourselves from enemies from abroad and within. That's what they always say, right? So you know it, yep. it's, it's it's always that fear. It's always that fear. And listen. Trust me, <laughs> the things that the government has, the AR-15 is not going to do shit. <laughs> like Jay said, they're going to come in, they're going to come in. So, you know, stockpile all you want. I mean, that's great. I have, I'm not here to tell you one way or the other. I just, uh, I understand, Henry, I, and uh, thanks for sending in the, uh, the email to the podcast. I understand your confusion on all this because in, in Australia, I don't know if you know this or not, Jay, but in their 90s, they had a pretty uh, bad mass shooting. I think like 40 people died or something like that. And they um, basically yep. banned every firearm uh, possible. So uh, they had like a buy-in program. I think it was in the mid '90s. We could just, you know, bring your gun back, and the government would buy it from you. You would get cash for it, and then that was it. Um, and so they've really had no incidents since then. I think maybe one other incident, uh, but that's it. Um, so I can understand Henry uh, your confusion, and again, hopefully we were able to answer your question. But um, you know. That's that's pretty much what it is here in the United States. But thanks for sending in that uh, email, Henry. And so uh, that's it for the mailbag, Jay. Um, so you're ready to go into the uh, meat and potatoes of the podcast. It's meat and potatoes time. This is Bernie Taylor, author of Before Ryan, Finding the Face of the Hero. You are now on Dark Fringe Radio. A new drug on the cusp of approval by the Food and Drug Administration is poised to change these old methods forever. Rob, Deputy Newman, U.S. Marshal Service. How you doing? Good. Sam, I'm in. Through the normal metabolic pathways in delivery. And the drug's name is Provasic. As I will show you tonight, Provasic is remarkably effective and has no side effects whatsoever. It is also noteworthy that this drug... That this drug was developed in cooperation, not competition, with the Chicago Memorial Hospital in what we hope will be the model for continued dishonest... Excuse me, honest... Open 
joint ventures between academic medicine and pharmaceutical industry, Richard. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of this speech. You almost got away with it, didn't you? I know all about it. I can prove it. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Richard Kimball doesn't feel well, obviously, so if you just go on with your dessert and coffee, Richard, do you mind to step aside and let's talk? Okay. So uh, I'll be back in just a second. You changed the samples, didn't you, huh? You switched the samples after Lentz died. Let's stay, stay calm, people. After Lentz died, you were the only one who had the access. You switched the samples and the pathology reports. Did you kill Lentz, too, huh? Can we get some security huh? in here, please? Get you? He falsified his research so that our DU-90 could be approved and Devlin McGregor could give you Provasic. All right, it's all over, folks. Let's just uh, stay calm. All right, brother, let's get into it. All right, so tonight we're going to be talking about the dark side of big pharma. And, Jay, this is um, a long time coming because this is something that we've been talking about doing an episode on, and we just kind of not uh, done it uh, for one reason or another. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's very important because – it really affects everyone uh, in one way or another. Anyone that listens to this podcast, uh, man, woman, child, uh, brother, sister, father, mother, uh, it affects them in one way or another. I truly believe because, uh, you know, at this point, you know, we are dependent on pharmaceuticals in one way or another. That's the way it seems. I mean, I have been lucky enough uh, to not be uh, dependent on anything uh, as far as pharmaceuticals are concerned um, because I don't have a need for it. But. You know, um, as far as my elders are concerned, as far as like aunts and mother and father and stuff like that, as people get older, uh, they develop uh, conditions and they begin to, you know, get on these pharmaceuticals and so on and so forth. So we're going to be talking about the dark side of big pharma and we're going to talk about the origins. Who are we talking about? You know, when we talk about big pharma, Jay, you know, that's just such like a big blanket statement, you know, like who the fuck is big pharma? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like. Everybody says Big Pharma, but who are they exactly? But, you know, we can get into who they are and, you know, why they are. And we're talking about companies, Jay, that make millions and billions and billions and billions. They make billions. Oh. They make billions of dollars. It's, and the thing that's crazy is it's not just one. It's a lot of them making billions of dollars. Yeah, and let's talk about the top, like, six, okay? Let's just talk about the top six, Jay. We got on top of the list. Yeah. Novartis, $273 billion. Come on. I mean, that's a lot of fucking money. Johnson & Johnson and <clears throat> at number one at $276 billion. How about that? Good grief. We got Pfizer coming in at a close third at $212 billion. We have Merck coming in at a fourth at $164 billion. We have Glaxo, Smith & Klein at $103 billion. And not to be uh, cut short, Ellie Lilly at $98 billion. So we're talking about these companies, Jay, that could literally bankrupt uh, an entire nation or even, um, you know, uh, cr create a new nation. I mean, pretty much with this kind of money you're talking about. What say you? I mean, what, what do you they think about this? They don't, have to create, they don't have to create a new nation. They have one. That is true. That's the thing. Everything, everything... Right now, in our economy, in our sociology, in our government, everything is com it's, it's run and it's controlled by big pharma. Because here's here's the thing, and Her uh, Hoover, uh, President Herbert Hoover, that's the motherfucker, said it best. Hey, well, you talk my name, put some respect on it, Jay. Come on. <laughs> All right, it's been a long day, all right, my man? So, <laughs> I, I start my statement again. President Herbert Hoover, who gets a bad rap as far as being one of the least successful presidents, 
because he was hit right in the middle of the fucking. And one of the things he said was the issue with capitalism is capitalists are too damn greedy. <laughs> and now what you have is you have a bunch of very solid, uh, very successful capitalists running a bunch of very big businesses with opioids, with medications that can be good. I'm not saying they're all bad. But there's a lot of holes in the system that these people are still reaping the benefits of because they don't really care about the product. They don't really care about the person. That's a problem. It's the, it's the, uh, the investment and the uh, return of uh, investment, the ROI, as they say in the investment world and uh you know that's that's what the the bottom line is and just to capitalize on that you know there's it's amazing that you turn on the television jay and if you were to turn on the local television and let's say it would be channel three let's just say over here for us is channel what wptv right locally yep so we're gonna watch channel three you watch channel three between the hours of six and eight and I swear to you, Jay, you will see 20 to 25 different advertisements for pharmaceuticals, every different type. Yep. And, and it's crazy. And that's because that's the prime time slots for people to watch television from 6 to 8, especially the older community. And they're going to watch what's on TV. They're going to see all the fucking advertisements for all the drugs. They're going to watch their Jeopardy. Sorry, I watched Jeopardy too. Doesn't mean I'm old, but we're gonna watch your Jeopardy. I was about to say, whoa, whoa, bro, yeah, yeah, whoa. I, know. I, I like Just Jeopardy. Just because one of us might watch Jeopardy, or you know, Price is Right, <laughs> no, or I like, Murder She Wrote. Uh, well, I don't know about. Doesn't make them old. Fuck Murder She Wrote, but <laughs> Jeopardy I can get on board <laughs> with. But listen, the the point of the matter is, is that they are pumping money into advertising, and that's why these companies make so much money. Jay, it's crazy. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Humira, right? It's an anti-inflammatory drug. Guess how many millions yeah. of dollars that company pushes on advertisers on a year? Uh, they probably spend $10 million a year on advertising. You would like to think that. It's actually $439 million. And that's fucking Holy crazy. Jesus. Exactly. Lyrica from Pfizer. It's a nerve pain management drug. You see it all the time. You you hear the name. You say Lyrica. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, it's a nerve pain because you see it so fucking much on TV. That's why you know the name. It's a nerve pain management. $392 million a year, Jay, just on advertising. Eliquis from Bristol Myers and uh, Squibb. It's a blood thinner. $296 million. Celljans from Pfizer. It's an anti-inflammatory. $258 million. Uh, I mean, we can just keep going. Chantix from Pfizer. $151 million to smoking... Uh, cessation uh, medicine. You, then, of course, you get into the fucking erectile dysfunction uh, drugs, the Cialis from Lilly, $150 million. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. And you understand then why you, you see this money that's just being spent, but how are they able to just be able to spend all this money just on advertising and why? It's because of the lobbyists that are in the government. They're able to lobby. Because of all this money that they have, they're able to put that money into lobbyists and control a lot of the the uh, oversight that the government has on these drug co companies. It really is. The regulation has been overseas by the lobbyists and these drug companies. And we're going to get into a lot of different you know examples of this, Jay. But go ahead. I want you to give us an example of what Big Pharma and the evil side of Big Pharma has to show to us, please. Well, there, there were a couple things I looked at that, I mean, it doesn't take it doesn't take a clairvoyant to see how greedy these companies are. But even if you just look at the microscop, the microscopic, the smaller things, the day to day ins and outs, you can see holes that prove just how greedy and unethical these companies are, and their and the things that they push. Uh, for instance. Uh, there are pharma trials that don't always focus on whatever the main issue is. Uh, say blood thinners, not blood thinners, uh, diabetes medicine. Right. It focuses on the levels of your blood sugar, and then it, it releases to try to lower those. But if all that is is a side symptom of ultimately what is the bigger issue, then it's not really curing the issue. It's not even 
It's not even stopping it. It's not even slowing it down. Uh, all it really is doing is lowering one of the side symptoms to make you feel like you're actually getting better, when in reality, you're not, it's, not, it's not worth shit, except for the fact that it continues to bring money into a company or into a entity that's only concerned with the bottom dollar. It's not really concerned with people that need the diabetes. It's not concerned with the people that need cancer medication. It's not concerned with finding cures, because if it cures the patient, it no longer has people to give them money. That's correct. Uh, like I said always, when it, when it comes to big pharma, there is no money in a cure. There's always money in a treatment. So uh, that's the uh, big pharma, uh, I think, uh, Alamara, or at least the, uh, you know, <laughs> what they go by. Uh, and it, it's crazy right. to, to, to imagine that you have these companies out here today, right? They make billions of dollars, yeah. like we, we've said, right? But they yeah. also get sued. They get sued the shit out of, and I'm talking about billions of dollars. And that kind of goes to show you that, hmm, there might be a little <clears throat> bit of complicitness with the government that there's so much of lawsuits that have been won and done. Let, let me just give you an example from Glasgow, Smith & Klein. There's been a settlement in 2012 for $3 billion. Pfizer for Brestra for $2.3 billion in 2009. Johnson & Johnson for Respiradol. Uh, for $2.2 billion in 2013. Abbott Laboratories for uh, the Pacote, that's what it's called, $1.5 billion. Uh, Ellie Lilly, uh, Zbrexa, $1.1 billion. Uh, again, Amgen for uh, Amnesep for $762 million. So you have all these companies, man, that are just getting you know, sued, and, you're, and they're winning because of the side effects are supposedly – not side effects, but now they uh, have been, uh, you know, shown to have these side effects and they can sue for them and they're <clears> winning. So it's just like, is the government kind of complicit in this, Jay? What do you think? Well, absolutely. Uh, here's the thing you have to keep in mind with, with Big Pharma. What they're doing is they're utilizing their monetary status. They're, they're not changing the numbers, but what they are is they're padding, they're padding the deck. Um, there have been studies that have shown that Trials run by pharmaceutically based or supported trials, they'll end up they'll end up with a positive result and positive advertising thirty percent more of the time than an individual study. Uh, and what that shows you is that shows you that the money is what pushes it for. So they're not really concerned about the side effects. They're not they're not really concerned about. Uh, making sure that it gets set up with the right people. They're not making sure that they're actually curing anything. All they're doing is making sure that they can push these things through that will mask the situation or mask the problem and allow them to continue to reap the benefits of the sick. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's yeah. scary. What they'll do is they'll actually take participants for their drug trials, for their tests, and instead of saying, Okay, we're going to give it to these people and see what, what affects the height, the weight, the race, the genetics of the person. Uh, and what they're going to do is they find the people they find the healthiest, <clears throat> that fit with a certain body type and a certain BMI, and they pay them to be guinea pigs. But then they actually say, okay, look, here's all these test subjects that everything has turned out great with, uh, and then the FDA approves it. They send out these medications, and you end up having it not do what it says it's going to do or have terrible side effects because it wasn't properly tested, it wasn't properly followed up on, and it was funded and pushed by an agenda to gain more money. Yeah, that's the, that's the bottom line is the bottom line <laughs> to do, uh, you know, to pun on that. But, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's crazy to know that. It's allowed. It, it it just seems like it's just there's a game that's being played with FDA. You know, it's like okay, drug company A comes up with a the drug. They say uh, this, 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 and this is the side effect. Okay, we'll give uh, maybe some bullshit scientific uh, research studies that you know maybe show a very low instance of uh, side effect A, B, C, and D, and then uh, FDA approves, and then next thing you know, drugs on the market, and next thing you know, company makes. 145 billion dollars that year from said drug and next thing you know they get sued for 143 million so 
what's okay? It's, you know what? What's the difference between 143 million and 292 billion is a lot of money. So it's a very small uh, loss for them to just put a drug out there that just may, you know, harm people <laughs> instead of actually helping them. And that's the whole, you know, the whole premise of what we're talking about tonight is that, you know, they're not really out there to help us. And no, they're not. They're they're out there to line their pockets. And that's, I think that's really, the stuff we're talking about is circumstantial. It's, it's majorly on the surface. You have to get to the heart and the root of the matter uh, to try to find a way. Even if there, there should be a better checks and balances with the after effects of the, the drug once it hits the market. Uh, but there's not. They just keep pushing pills because they want to make money. And there's an ethics question that you have to ask. You know, like we had an emailer in the mailbag who's asking why we stockpile our guns. We stockpile our guns because as Americans, we don't trust our government. And these are reasons why. Yeah, that's a perfect example. I mean, look, it's being allowed. And nobody's, you know, well, people are, some people are, uh, you know, like us and others. But, uh, you know, most people are just turn a blind eye to it. They're like, ah, oh, it's okay. I'm just going to keep going to the doctor and get my pills and I'll be okay. And that leads me into my next thing. Um, you know, when it comes to this big pharma thing, it, the opioid crisis, Jay. Gosh, man. I mean, we uh, listen. We grew up in the '90s, right? And what 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 do they have? Yeah. What do they have in the '90s? I'm trying to remember. It was like pot and like mushrooms, and that was pretty much it. I mean, like if you're really hardcore, that was, that was it. Acid, acid. If you're really like, hardcore, the, cocaine. The really hardcore people did acid. Yeah, or cocaine or something like that. You know, I mean. Yeah. You know, now it's so crazy, Jay. I mean, we're talking about you know these kids are popping pills, and these are pharmaceuticals. These are coming from big pharma. They're popping oxys yeah. and roxies, and uh, it's you know you hear about it. It's in it's in the media. It's in the rap videos. It's in the music. It's in the culture. It's already like it's permeated into it, and, and it's crazy because it it just it happened so fast. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden. You know, kids went from like smoking pot and, you know, tripping on, you know, on mushrooms to like doing, you know, oxycodone and sniffing like, uh, uh, what is that fucking, um, Adderall and, you know, doing all this crazy shit. And it's, it's all because of profit, man. It's all because of profit. Really. I mean, think about it. These drug companies have done this. They've gone. And look, there's an example of it right now. Listen, in Boston. Employees at a drug company, they accused of bribing doctors and wrapped and danced around a life-size bottle of highly addictive fentanyl spray in a video meant to motivate sales reps into getting patients on higher doses. Do you want to repeat that for you, Jay? Employees at a drug uh, company. No, thank you. I, I have little enough faith in, in humanity. <laughs> I mean, there's a video that shows, that was shown to jurors, this, you know, during this trial that basically showed the... Boston company called Insys Therapeutics Inc. and the founder John Kapoor and four other one-time executives, including a former exotic dancer who prosecutors say was hired as a regional sales manager. So now they're hiring exotic dancers, Jay, as regional sales managers for drug companies. Okay. Yeah, because they're not they're not selling the the pill. The pill itself is they're selling that booty. It makes you feel like you're purchasing something, you know. It, it, it's you're not just buying air. You're buying oh, you're buying this little pill that's uh, it's gonna it's gonna help Timmy be able to wiggle his toes better. Uh, but you're not doing that. The doctors are looking to hot chicks, going, "Yeah, I'll buy your shit. I don't care." Uh, <laughs> yeah, give the grandma eat it. They say it's good for cholesterol. That sounds great, Bob. Like it just it, it just goes to show you that honestly, the whole system. The whole fucking the whole fucking system. Uh, it's focused on on money. The whole thing. Yeah, you know, insurance companies jacking up people's rates by two hundred percent, taking the money without uh, authority, and then telling that poor customer that oh yeah, it's gonna be forty five business days to get your check back. Yeah. Oh, and you're gonna get in the mail. Yeah. Like, exactly. That's it's a just bullshit. the whole system. You have big farmers creating the pills that's 
feeding the sick. It's not healing the sick. It's feeding the sick. Exactly. So and sick people can't afford the pills on their own. So now they have to have the insurance companies. They pay the insurance companies the premiums. The insurance companies, because you only get such a finite amount of options, that you end up paying stupid, ridiculous premiums and not having any ability to go from one to another or get any kind of help to insure your family. And then, of course, what you end up doing, you end up having to get out credit cards, you end up building loans, you end up creating such a massive self debt you're going to have to work until the day after you die to pay for everything because we are nothing but we're dollar farm. Yeah. It's, we're dollar farm. It's crazy, and you know, it, it's just just as another example of what they will do to make profit. And uh, you know, it's crazy to know that we're in an op- opioid crisis right now, Jay. And you know, there's uh, yeah, it, it's it's hit a lot of people. It's hit so many people, and it's hit people from every walk of life. I don't care if you're white, black, yellow, Hispanic, black, purple, pink, or blue. I don't care. It's hit everyone, and because. You know where it starts? Where it all begins from, Jay. It all starts with the pills. It all starts with the pills. It all starts from that first prescription yeah. that they get for their nagging back injury or their nagging neck injury or this injury or that injury or whatever injury it may be. It, it starts from that point on. And from that point on, it develops a bad just fucking process. Because what happens is, is that they don't get better. They prescribe more and more pills until they can't prescribe anymore, and then they cut them off, and then they don't know where to get any more type of prescriptions because then they start trying to buy prescriptions on the black market, and then they end up in jail for getting caught buying fucking pills on the black market, or they end up doing heroin, which most of them end up doing. And I wanted to kind of bring up um, this uh, clip from Parts Unknown. Actually, uh, it's uh, Anthony Bourdain, and he was talking about how the opioid crisis affected uh, the town that he actually grew up in in Massachusetts. And I want to play that real quick here for the listeners, Jay. So you don't mind holding on, do you? No, of course not. I want to hear this. All right, hold on one second, Jay. Massachusetts is quite small town America. Now the spear point for skyrocketing use of heroin, the worst drug you can do, is small town America. You know, these are our kids and our neighbors in a small town where everybody knows each other, where you know half the town is doing dope. The war on drugs is clearly not working. Uh, I am the only one assigned to the narcotics position. How many heroin addicts do you think are, are walking the streets of Greenfield right now? I'm going to say that we're in the high hundreds. Wow. We're in the high hundreds. High hundreds. Yeah. When I started to look into it and think about it, I kind of found my way back to my own past. Uh, both in in Massachusetts, which is where I started my career as a cook at age 17, and my own career with heroin. Looking at your own past and your own youth is, uh, you know, always, you know, one is always filled with a sweetness, sadness, and regret. So it's it's a show that happens to take place in Massachusetts, but it is largely about my own path to heroin and how the hell, you know, mom, dad, junior, and the high school quarterback in small town America are all shooting dope now. Everybody starts with pills. There's nobody who Everybody. Goes, everybody starts with pills. There's nobody who goes from marijuana to heroin. There's an in-between step. How do we fix it? When you're talking about one small town that's gone from no drugs to strung out on heroin, it's easier to see what's gone right and what's gone wrong and where things could have been different. So, yeah, there you go, Jay. Middle America, Massachusetts. You don't get any, uh, you know, more Middle America than that, right? Dude, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And it honestly goes back, actually goes back to uh, times of, like, prohibition and how something more natural like marijuana or, like, CBD uh, can help alleviate a lot of pain without being anywhere near as addictive or anywhere near as self-destructive. But it also doesn't cost as much. It doesn't cost as much, and you see magnificent results with it, which, to me, is just being overlooked, and it's a crime that it's being overlooked. It is an absolute crime that people right now are hooked on heroin. They're hooked on oxycodone. 
that are hooked on methadone, that are hooked on all these things when they can be weaned off of this in a natural way. And it just, it really is criminal to me. It, to me, it's just, everybody knows the solution, but two are too fucking up their ass to even do anything about it. And it, to me, it's, it's a crime. Well, it's beyond, it's beyond a crime. It's, it's deplorable what these companies do to make a dollar. You know, I, I understand they all have, they have families to feed and, and I congratulate them on being successful, but be, what, but to what extent are you being successful? Like, how are you improving humanity? When, how are you being part of a solution and not part of a machine? When fucking insulin was $86 a dose in 2016 has risen to $436 a dose. Explain that. There's no reason Crazy. for that. There's no reason for that. And it keeps going up. No. You know, you talk about your nephew, mm -hmm. and you understand why. There's people out there in the streets right now that are actually skipping taking insulin. People that are dependent, you know what I mean, on insulin. Not because they're overweight, but just because they were born with insulin deficiencies. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, it's not because of, you know, certain, you know, choices that they've made. No, they were born with, you know, these issues. And it's impossible for somebody to be able to afford something like this when the price just keeps going up. I mean, remember that guy, Martin Sh uh, Shkreli guy? He was the one who fucking upped the 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 HIV medicine that uh, it went up like four thousand yeah. four thousand percent or something like that. I mean, something crazy. crazy. And I mean, again, we see it day in and day up, and they become even more sneaky. Jay, what do they do now? Check this out. So now that they know that they can hook you, that you're hooked on heroin, right? Now they're going to come up with the drug that counteracts the heroin so you, you don't overdose so that we can we can make more money off the people that we've got on heroin in the first place so check that shit out i mean that's the way it is now believe it or not so now they're even oh no i believe it yeah now they're making money on the cure itself and so where does it end why do they allow this why does the fda allow this why? Why does the government allow this? There's no regulation. There's too many people with money, the lobbyists of these drug companies up there, and it's just it's wreaking havoc on America. And, and, and it's going to be tough for us to come back. It's the golden rule. Explain, Jake. That's the golden rule. It's, he who has the gold makes the rule. These, pharma, these pharmaceutical companies have created its own uh, self-perpetuating system where it just continues to create addicts that feeds the, the machine that kicks out the money. This huge circle. They're going to keep finding just new ways to wrap the same basic medications, kick them out to the same poor-ass people who need it because they have to work two jobs to continue paying all their bills so their knees ache. So what do they do? They take something to help them with their knee ache or uh, heaven forbid they have some kind of malady, some kind of eyesight issue that they have to take something for, some kind of heart condition or diabetes or some kind of something that they have to have this medication. It is super important for their life that they take these medications so they have no choice but to pay for. And it just, it keeps cycling. And it's because the, the companies that have the money, they're all battling to see who can be the richest at the end. Yeah. I'm not even sure what the end is. But they're, they want to be the richest at the end. I don't know. Yeah, and right. it's just cycling through. It's, it's a fucking shame. It is a shame. And so, yeah, that's my rant, man. I think that's pretty much it for the, uh, you know, the dark side of uh, Big Pharma. Unless you have something else to add to this, Jay, please. Because, uh, you know, anything else to add to this mountain of bullshit, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, the only thing I can add in is that I, I, I'm hopeful for the future. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for the next couple of generations. And hopefully we can raise better individuals with more open minds and ability to find ways to help people, not just to make money. Yeah. And actually cure things and not treat things. Uh, that's the cure. That's the, that's the key to this whole thing, not to treat, but to cure. Once they start treating, uh, yep. when, you know, once they stop treating and curing, that's when things are going to change. I think that's when, you know, that's when the tide changes, but up until then, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, this is going to continue to happen, and it's just going to be on to the next thing that comes out, uh, the next drug. Uh, who knows? You know, it's just it, it goes from one thing to another with generational things. I, I don't know. But, you know, that's my rant on 
uh, Big Pharma and the evil side and the dark side of Big Pharma J. That sounds like a good wrap up. And let's go into the outro. But first, of course, what to watch, Jay? What do you got for this week for what to watch? So what to watch is obviously Targo that we talked about earlier. There's a show you can also find on on Netflix, and it's called Flinch. Check this out, Will. It takes like fear factor and adds an actual physical damage. Yeah, I saw this. So you have I three hosts. It. I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. You see the episode? Oh, I saw one. I saw like two episodes. I saw the first one with like the Indian dude. Like he didn't flinch for shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> No man. <laughs> no, it's a good show, but tell everybody. No man, that please, kid was a flinch. And he had that like big tall white guy who was screaming like a little girl and trying then he tried to act up with a dude, train of rotten screamed, meat coming in front of him and he still he almost puked and like he got a, shocked. Like a, so you have three hosts. Yeah. And they have a group of people that they pick. And each round they go through, they have to randomly re- repick new people. And it adds up the amount of times that their, uh, the people that they've had to choose flinch. So at the end, whichever host uh, flinchers, if you will, loses, they have to go through a flinch challenge where they are just to- the host of the show. The host of the show are tortured it is fantastic yeah it's a great premise man yes whoever the 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 person who has the the most flinches the loser of that person the host yeah you like you said they end up going to this fucking thing and it's a great show i thought it was great yeah that's a great choice jay thank you All right. Well, listen, that's I don't have anything else to add to that. I thought it was great. Like I said, I saw it literally before I went on this trip to uh, California and I was like, I saw one episode. I was like, this looks too good. Right. Like, I have to watch this. Like, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. It was like, OK, this is- I was just looking for something stupid to watch, like a series. I'm exactly. like, oh, exactly. there's some dumb reality show. And then I watched for some episode. I'm like, oh, my God, I love this. I'm hooked. This is fantastic. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, uh, everybody, yeah, check that out. It's called Flinched. It's on Netflix. I saw the first episode. I thought it was great. Um, It definitely pulls you in. uh, So definitely check that out. All right, Jay, that's it for this week. We'll get into the outro. I just want to remind everybody uh, to uh, please, uh, if you have anything to add to the podcast, you want to send us any kind of correspondence, any email, uh, email to us or any kind of correspondence, please send it to thedarkfringe at gmail.com. Again, thedarkfringe at gmail.com. Of course, just want to remind everybody you can listen to us on every freaking platform available that you can listen to any kind of pla- uh, podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, everywhere else. Just uh, check us out on Dark Fringe Radio. Anything else for you to add tonight, Jay? That's it, man. Let's, uh, let's just hope for the future. Yeah, let's hope we don't end up like Wally, the movie Wally. So uh, we'll see. All right, guys. All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, listen, again, Will Martinez for Jay Glossy and Dark Fringe Radio. Thank you again, and we'll see you again next week.
Too big.